Rocks are everywhere. Sometimes they're very noticeable. But nothing is more common than rock. Most of the planet Earth is made of rock. We make things from rock. We also need rocks to get metal for our tools and to get our food. Besides that, rocks are just interesting in themselves. There are so many kinds you can collect, different colors, different textures, different hardnesses. If you look at most rocks carefully, you can see specks in them. The specks are often different colors and have different hardnesses. These specks are minerals. Most rocks are mixtures of several different minerals. In this piece of granite, we can see some light colored quartz, some feldspar, and the dark silvery gray specks are mica. Is this rock also a mixture of minerals? Yes, but the specks of different minerals are so small, you can't see them with the naked eye. To study the minerals in rocks, scientists make rock slices so thin you can see through them. When these slices are viewed under the microscope with polarized light, we can see the different minerals in the rock. Can you see the different minerals in these rocks? Sometimes we can find a mineral all by itself, not mixed with another mineral. Minerals are often very beautiful. This is the mineral feldspar. This is the mineral mica. And this is the mineral quartz. Mixed together, these minerals make the rock granite. Rocks are mixtures of minerals. Granite from different places may have different amounts of quartz, feldspar, and mica, and even include other minerals. But a mineral, like quartz, is always made of the same chemical elements in the same proportions. All quartz, wherever you find it, has two atoms of oxygen for every atom of silicon. These pieces of quartz are different colors because of impurities. But do you notice any similarities between them? One way they are similar is in shape. They have definite shapes with flat surfaces. Forms like these are called crystals. Each mineral's crystals have a particular shape because that's one way the atoms of the elements in the mineral can fit together. The sides of quartz crystals from anywhere in the world meet at the same angle. There are many different crystal shapes. Crystals of some minerals look like little boxes. Some people grow crystals as a hobby. A 
a small seed crystal of a chemical is hung in water, in which a lot of the chemical has been dissolved. The crystal grows as atoms of the chemical come out of the solution and attach to the side of the crystal. After many days, a big crystal can be harvested. But not all crystals grow from solutions. This is table salt. can be melted, becoming a liquid. When it cools, it forms crystals again. In nature, crystals may also form when molten rock cools. Volcanoes pour out lava that becomes rock when it cools. If the lava cools very, very rapidly, there may be no time for any crystals to grow at all, and a rock called obsidian, or volcanic glass, is formed. American Indians prized obsidian for it made the sharpest axes and arrowheads. Molten rock, rising from deep within the earth, doesn't always reach the earth's surface to make a volcano. Often it cools slowly underground. Many kinds of granite and many other kinds of rock were made by molten rock cooling. Rocks that were formed by the cooling of molten rock either underground or on the surface, are called igneous rocks. It may be that billions of years ago, the only kind of rock on Earth was igneous rock. But rocks are changed. Forces of nature start to change igneous rock as soon as it appears on the surface of the Earth. You may have changed some rocks as a hobby. Besides the rocks, you put in some abrasive. That's the black stuff. It makes it work faster. Also water, not too much. The tumbler has a rubber lid that's watertight. You have to put it on carefully. It has to be tightened down hard. A motor keeps the tumbler turning around for a couple of weeks, maybe longer. After a month, we open the tumbler. The water's got the abrasive in it, and now it's also got a lot of rock powder. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Days and days of rubbing against each other have worn away the edges on the rocks and made them smooth. How do you think this beach pebble got so round and smooth? The wearing down of rocks is called weathering. Here's another kind of weathering, by chemical reaction. An acid, like vinegar, will attack this limestone. 
rain is a very weak acid. Over millions of years, it can eat away many minerals in rocks. When a rock weathers, the different minerals in it may weather differently. The quartz and feldspar in granite weather differently. The specks of quartz, which is a very hard mineral, become grains of sand. The specks of feldspar, which is more easily attacked, turn into clay and dissolved plant nutrients. Clay and sand and dissolved plant nutrients help make soil. If rocks didn't weather, we wouldn't have any soil, any plants, or any food. Wind and running water often wash the sand and clay to the bottoms of lakes and oceans. There they settle in layers, and in time these layers turn to rock. Rocks made this way are called sedimentary rocks. This is sandstone, a sedimentary rock formed from grains of sand. Looking through a thin slice of sandstone, we can see the grains quite clearly. Finally, there is a third way rocks can be formed. In this laboratory, scientists apply tremendous heat and pressure to different substances. Today, they're going to heat and squeeze some graphite, a form of carbon. This press will apply a pressure of millions of pounds per square inch to the graphite. We started with graphite, a black powder. Heat and pressure has changed it to diamonds. In nature, Rocks are changed by great heat and pressure. Rocks formed in this way are called metamorphic rocks. Sandstone, a sedimentary rock, can be changed to quartzite, a metamorphic rock. Granite, an igneous rock, can be changed to gneiss, a metamorphic rock. What good does it do us to know these things? Well, for one thing, it helps us to find valuable minerals. Gold, for example, is very often found on quartz. So one way of finding gold is to look for quartz. People who look for oil look for sedimentary rock. For oil is usually found trapped between layers of sedimentary rock. Knowing what elements are in minerals helps us find metal-bearing rocks, called ores. From iron ores, we get the metal needed to run our factories, farms, and homes. This man knows a lot about crystals. It's his job to grow them. He's growing a crystal of silicon, like the silicon in quartz. A seed crystal is lowered into molten silicon, then slowly pulled out, only as fast as the crystal can grow. When the crystal is cooled, a saw cuts it into thin slices. A thin slice of silicon crystal like this can be made into dozens of transistors. From the study of rocks, people learned about silicon and about crystals. And that knowledge has helped make modern electronics possible. Rocks and minerals are also clues to the Earth's history. Geologists analyzed rocks from South America and Africa to find out what minerals they were made of and how much of each mineral. When they compared the rocks from the two continents, they found pairs of rocks that had exactly the same percentages of the same minerals. These are the places where the pairs of rocks came from. Does this give you any ideas?
The pairs of rocks show how once millions of years ago, South America and Africa fitted together as one continent. The study of rocks and minerals is one important way of finding out about the history of the Earth, our home. This rock doesn't even come from the Earth. It's a moon rock. By comparing the mineral makeup of the moon rocks with the minerals in rocks on Earth, scientists are finding out more about how the solar system began. Let's review some of the things you know about rocks and minerals. There are three kinds of rocks according to how they were made. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Rocks are mixtures of minerals. Rocks weather or break down when they are exposed on the Earth's surface. Knowledge of rocks and minerals helps us locate resources we need and adds to our knowledge of the Earth's history. The way we live today, the things we do, would be impossible without the resources we have won by studying rocks and minerals. <laughs>